all the way down here for the gold show, huh? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm uh, touring around the country on my off season and uh, happen to be in Vegas during this weekend. Nice. Now you say the off season. I think you do some dredging up there. Yes, uh, during the summers I mine for gold offshore of Nome. Uh, we are one of the top three offshore known gold mining operations. We run an 18 inch remote operated vehicle. Uh, that's 18 inch intake suction dredge. Uh, 24,000 pound remote operated vehicle. Now, is that the one like you've seen on Barrow Sea Gold? Is it one like that? that uh, well, that's a tiny little toy version. <laughs> um, but that, that would concept. be a 4 inch. Uh, ours is uh, 18 inch. Wow. Yeah, pull some major gold with that. Um, we do pretty well. We uh, mine professionally. I do this for a living. I work five months a year, and then seven months of the other year I do other things. <laughs> now, I know we were talking a little bit ago, and you said that built... I designed and built what I call the Ziggurat, a 10-inch uh, fast attack dredge, which uh, then later I uh, let Zeke uh, lease from me, and then he, he proceeded to purchase it, and... Uh, and then sold that to Emily. Oh, that is a, uh, that, it's a cool, cool dredge. Yeah, it's, uh, it was made really lightweight, so it could travel really fast and get down to the Tom Cod very quickly. Um, I've been mining in Nome for 11 years. The first six years of that was as a diver. I owned several 8-inch dredges and, and a couple 6-inch dredges, and uh, then I built that 10-inch dredge. And uh, most of that time was in what's now called the Tom Cod. We called it Just Creek at the time. <laughs> Now, someone like me that's here in Ohio, you know, I'm from Ohio, mm -hmm. and if I was to come up there and I ran into you, do you take anybody out and say, hey, you know, we want to show you how to do this? Or uh, We're pretty busy in the summertime. We work 13-hour days for five months, and, uh, you know, I, I don't have much other time to, oh, okay. uh, to entertain people. Um, I'd, I'd love to be able to take people out on the dredge and show them around. It, it just, it's so labor-intensive, you know. Oh, I bet. Seven days a week, 12, 13-hour days, and uh, every day that the weather's good. And when the weather's not good, we're fixing stuff, repairing stuff, and cleaning the gold. And now, how hard is it to really get parts up for, for well, repairs? What we do, we have backup and tertiary parts for everything that we might have an issue getting a spare for. So we can make every single hydraulic hose we have on our boat, we can make that on the boat without going to shore. We have every hydraulic motor and, and pump we have spares for, we can rebuild the, the motors and pumps. Um, every seal that we need, we have spares of everything. Wow. So it, it costs a lot in all the spares, but we don't want an hour of downtime. Right, yeah, it'd be worth the habit there. So now, now when you're out there and you're diving, What's been some of the, besides gold, you know, everybody goes, oh, hey, look, they're diving, they're going to get gold. Have you ever found anything else cool down under the water? Right, so, while I don't dive anymore, we send okay. the ROV down. Uh, the first six years I was diving, I have over 1,200 hours in the bottom. Uh, I've seen some some weird things, you know, there, there's the metal you come across, it's <laughs> from, you know, you try to imagine where did this metal come from, it's from, you know, 1900s, and sometimes I'm dredging along and I pick up a rock, and a piece of wood will float up. Uh, it's like, how did that piece of wood get under this rock? It's under 20 feet of water. And uh, one, of the, one of the crazier times, um, we, were, we were dredging long, and uh, I was underwater, and, and my partner was up top, and, and I thought the dredge was coming over top of me. You know, they got dark and yeah. cloud, and so when that happens, that means the tails I might be jumping on my head. So I, I'm, I look up, expecting rocks to be falling on my head. And it's a school of salmon. <laughs> Hundreds, big thousands of fish are swimming over my head. So I jump up and swam into them, and, and just like in the movies or the, yeah. you know, the Discovery or yeah, you know, how the, they swim those shows, they swim around me, and I can't touch any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing how they do that. Oh, that, that is just like the coolest thing. Yeah. So I mean, now have you had any kind of scary experiences down there? Uh, yeah. Um, one time we were on the six inch dredge, so we do that solo. Um, my my air compressor pressure line, you know, the hot end of the air compressor, that hose blew. And I was at 20 feet, and I was wearing a full face mask, which isn't advisable unless you have to talk to someone. Um, and I forgot to rip the mask off my face. So I'm, I'm down there and the air pressure went to surface pressure. The mask suction cup to my face and uh, gave me a giant icky. And my eyes look like Wolverine bloodshot eyes for a month. Wow. Hmm. 
So I, I just can't imagine. I mean, because I bought, you know, I, I do dredging in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a two inch, I've got a two and a half. I'm getting in the process of getting a two and a half right now. But you know, I don't go in the water. So, you know, but I do want to come up to know and get under and see what it's like up there. Yeah. It's a fun I, experience. I, I would just love to do that. Now, when you're at 20 feet, do you notice the, the pressure? Yes, uh, it, it's significant. Um, 20 feet, you can dive in limited time. You're not limited by the dive tables, by your, your absorption of nitrogen or anything. Uh, but you have to be careful with going up or down too fast. And, uh, could get the just because the pressure and the equalization of your ears. And, uh, what's, some of the, what's some of the deepest depths you, you've dove? Um, the deepest depth I've dove was I did uh, about 40 feet, um, but that, we were experimenting with lung hose on my first year. Um, it's pretty green, so we went to the, the far end of this lease we got permission on, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. But you know, at that depth, I didn't know. You know, just 12 years ago, I, I didn't know you need lights to be able to see the gold um, at, at 40 feet. Um, currently, with the ROV, we operate at 45 to 65 feet. So we have to be prepared to be able to dive down there if there's a problem with it to retrieve it. Right. Um, I've never had to do that though. Um, was it was it pretty overwhelming? Like the first time you actually when you dove, um, was it pretty overwhelming the first time when you dove? You know, actually getting to see the gold suck up into yeah. the nozzle. I mean, was that what was that experience like for right. you? So before I went to Nome the first time, I. Uh, took a paddy open water course, as I recommend everyone does, take some sort of open water course just so you know you're breathing underwater and uh, escape procedures. But my first year mining, I don't think I ever saw gold underwater. I uh, spent $90,000 and got an ounce. So, wow. Um, and that's a typical story. Most people, their first year, they you know that's, that's the story. If they do their own equipment and don't have the experience of something to help them. Just trying to think of what else here we got on. So I, I have a website and okay. I, I post um, I, you know various blogs and uh, and help helpful information for people who want to get started in home or think about going gold mining and um, on Facebook it's Sapinat Services on the internet it's uh, sapinat.com yep. and that's that's spelled it's an acronym it means sufficiently adequate for our needs at this time. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, uh, and I, you know, I have, if you're thinking about going to Nome, I, I offer free advice to anyone who wants to come to Nome, you know, as long as you email me uh, in the wintertime when I'm not, you know, up yeah. in Nome. Um, I have plenty of free time. Now, when you're not in Nome, are you down here in the lower 48 all the time? Or? Uh, typically, I'm I'm at home uh, in Eagle River. Uh, that's where I grew up. Okay. And uh, I find fun things to do, like... Uh, <laughs> like all the gold shows. <laughs> well, I... You know, some years I would substitute teach just for fun. And oh, that's good. Now, what do you teach? Oh, I don't know, whatever. Well, whatever they need. Now, you you've got a pretty big pretty big operation, right? You're, yes. You uh, looking for? Uh, well, hang on a second. We got a we got a big announcement. Yeah, I got an announcement from uh, Kevin Hoagland. So we'll. Uh, We'll wait till we, he gets done uh, screaming on the internet or over the, on the internet over the PA. Now you, you're currently looking for uh, some actually uh, some some investors, right? Because you got that that big operation you got right now. Right. So my, my current operation it's it's self sufficient and it it's good and, and it, it works just fine. It's uh it's kind of old. It's 11 years old and uh, the other guys they want to keep running it as is and and I'm looking to go bigger. We have over 3,000 acres of offshore mining leases. Uh, that's three times the Tomcod, three times the size of the Tomcod. Wow. Um, and uh, so we need a bigger piece of equipment to, to run that. And then uh, right. looking for uh, people that are excited about gold mining and have some money. And, and if they're interested in putting some money towards an operation, you know, like 100000 each, then that would that, yeah, I wish I had something like and, that. And how, how can they get a hold of you? How would you, how would they get a hold of you again? To... Uh, either through Facebook, uh, Sapinat Services, or through my website, uh, sapinat.com. It's one out of two Gs. And what we'll do is, you know, I've, I've got your, some of your information here, so, you know, we can put a link out, you know, in, in our links page and direct people to you, you know. 
So. Cool, that was awesome, man. We really appreciate yeah, you taking you time. Uh, no time out and then coming and having a chat with us. Yeah. Um, it, it's really awesome to be able to talk to some of you guys, especially from Alaska, you know. It it actually gets get out in the in the big waters and uh, Yeah, it's an exciting place up there. Uh, there's a lot of potential in Nome, but there's also a lot of potential for heartbreak and uh, people going broke. I, I see it every year. People you know, as I say, more money has been spent trying to get gold out of the ocean than has been made getting gold out of the ocean. Wow, so, right. It's, uh, it's a tough business to get into, and I recommend people get informed and educated before they spend a lot of money. Okay. Cool. Well, we don't want to keep you around too long, because I know you're you're out wanting to walk around and that. So. Yeah, this is neat. But, I've never been to a GPA show before. Yeah. Uh, but, but we do thank you for stopping by and, thank you. and, and talking with us. All right. Well, everybody, that was Andrew Lee from Safinat, as long as I'm saying that right, Services, LLC. Uh, you can get him at www. And I will spell this out, S-A-F-O-N-A-T-T.com or Facebook.com, and that is S-A-F-O-N-A-T-T, S-E-R. V I C E S. And I'll show it. And what you, what show you it can on do the... is just say that, you know, you heard about him here at the Las Vegas Gold Show. So at least he knows where some of his uh, potential questions are coming from. But again, thank you, Andrew. All right, thank you.